Hi, in this video I want to explain uh, the hierarchy behind CSS selectors. So, let's take a look at the same button again, the button POST. So as you can see here, this button is under this div CSS selector, and then it's after another div, and yet after another div, and under another one, and so on. So this is the hierarchy. Um, it goes from kind of broad to narrow. So it goes from broad to narrow. That means if I scroll up, you can see here, selecting HTML selects the whole website. Selecting the body also selects pretty much the whole website. And then it goes more, it narrows down towards certain major blocks, let's call them that way. So, for example, this one for the dialogue narrows down the selector to the dialogue, but still this dialogue cons consists of many different elements. Inside the dialogue, there are several, let's say, elements. One is, for example, this close, close button. Then on the same level, you can see there is a um, sort of this header for create a post. There is this whole lower part of it. And inside that lower part, we have the share box where we have certain elements, for example, just for the, for pasting the text. And then this whole sort of share or like additional options, let's call it additional options box, inside of which there are elements such as adding hashtag, a certain hash or certain certain buttons for adding pictures or YouTube video link. And if I expand it inside, there would be probably each of those elements individually, as you can see. And inside each um, element, there is also a button inside each button, there is also a, um, the icon. So this is the hierarchy. Now, what can we do about it? All right, so let's get back to our button uh, post. Um, as mentioned many times, there are many ways to express the CSS selector. Now let's add additional ways uh, or additional CSS selectors with which we could express or address this uh, button post, now with a hierarchy. Hierarchy basically means that you add the elements in which, under which this, uh, this specific element is. So in our situation, that would be, first of all, that would be the whole body. So let's, let's add that. Body. The next one is after the body is div, this one, div. And to indicate a hierarchy, I can add this sign greater less, greater than, div, continue. After div, there is yet another div, this one. So adding that one and uh, continue with the next one. This is for the dialogue. So div, the dialogue. Now, you notice that I only use tags and not, and I don't use the uh, attributes. This is not a rule. I could also use attributes. I could add attributes to every element here, or I can simply use the tag. Typically for this kind of hierarchies, you just use the, the tags, especially where you are identifying the whole chain of the hierarchy, because just by using that hierarchy, it's often already well, let's say enough, and um, you don't need to add the attributes. But this is again, this is not a rule, and this can be different depending on your website and your use case. So for example, for this one, I may want to add this, um, that it's div, 
that uh, includes this button. So this was this one, div data test model role dialog. As I imagine there are not so many dialogues, that looks to me like a very unique and identifiable value. So I would take that attribute role equals dialog. And as usual, I would insert it this way. Role for the attribute equals single quotes dialog for the value inside. And let's move on. The next one after that is this div. Yeah, so we address this for the dialog. And after the dialog, the next one, which are all on the same level, so note that. So I need to get to this one, this div. Continue. Now I have yet another div with class share box. And perhaps I'll add it as an attribute. Again, not a must, but the purpose of this video is simply for you to understand what a hierarchy is. Uh, when to use it and when not to use it, that type of question we can, I can address uh, in a moment. So share box. The next one is, the next div is share creation state, which is inside. So let's add another div. And underneath that one, um, we have two divs and we need, in this case, the second one, share creation state bottom. So the way I could address it here, for example, would be div um, class lose match with the star equals bottom to indicate I need that second div. Greater less, greater than, opening this, and we see here one div for the above section and one div for the lower one. Since our post button is in the low one, we need this one. So that would be another div as a tag. And if I wanted, I could also add in an attribute, which is a footer, as you can see here, to differentiate it from the above class lose match with a star equal single quotes footer and let's continue once we got there we have here three divs one for the left section another one for this middle one and the button the button post is inside this one so that would be div share box Class, share box, lose match. I mean, in this situation, actually, you could also use the exact one and you could just add share box actions. And then the next one is going to be button. Now let's check if it's unique enough and if we can identify the button this way. Go into the console again. I hit the arrow up to get my latest command, document query selector all, and I'm removing what I had previously inside the double quotes and pasting the new one. Hitting enter, and as you can see, we identified the right selector, the right button. One important note, did you notice how without a hierarchy, if we just inserted button, then we had a list of 85 elements that would have been addressed this way. By giving a clear hierarchy, I didn't need to add any attributes here. So I kind of narrowed down the with the hierarchy uh, to the button that I need. Now let's get to the question, is it actually a good selector? Would I recommend using this selector? And my answer is no. The answer is no, 
because again, you have many opportunities for failure. If something changes inside this hierarchy, again, code gets rewritten, uh, website gets updated, this div is not there anymore. Or imagine another situation, there is something else added inside, some link or something, and your selector will be completely failing. That's why in that specific situation, I would recommend you to stick to the very first selector that you've built, where you simply have button, its attribute, and that's it. Now, this, however, won't work for every case. So in many cases, you do need to, indic to indicate the hierarchy. That's why it's really important that you also understand how hierarchy works. And right now, I'm going to show you another way how to use hierarchy, but in a more in a leaner way and this way, more robust way. So as you have seen here, I'm using everywhere this greater than uh, sign in order to indicate this strict hierarchy. But just like with this equal sign for hierarchy, there is also a strict hierarchy and a loose hierarchy. So what I could also do, let me copy that and paste it here. What I could also do if I remove this sign and just have a space between two elements with this, um, I'm defining the hierarchy in a loose way. That means it doesn't matter how many elements are between body and div. There may be more, it would still work. Important part here is that you want to have your CSS selectors as lean as possible. So do not use any elements that you don't, that you don't think you need. In this situation, for example, we could try simply using the div with the dialog to narrow it down to only the dialog, remove everything else like that and address this share box, Steve. This is for this right one, I believe. And, uh, and leave the button inside. So as you can see, in this case, I added three elements or the hierarchy of three elements. One, the dialog inside that box where the button is placed and the button itself. By having here the space, simply the space, not the strict hierarchy, um, I, I have a, a loose way of defining how many, I just define the order of it, but I don't care how many elements are between them. One important note, you can combine the strict and loose hierarchy, it's possible. So I could also do it like this. And in some situations, it may make sense. Um, in some situations, I have, I perhaps want just to have a loose order of the initial elements and then really have a strict hierarchy for the latest element uh, to have a higher uniqueness. So let's take this one here and check its uniqueness with the usual method of document query selector all, delete the previous one inside the quotes, the double quotes, add the new one, hit enter, and the right selector is right there. The right element was identified, as you can see on the left. Now, let me try again with loose hierarchy. What if I delete this greater than sign and just use it this way? In this situation, as you can see, for example, this was not unique enough. So this share box didn't allow me to or this structure did not allow me to create a unique enough selector. So in that situation, I need to use that greater than sign. And let's experiment more. What if I delete this one? Would that be enough? Almost. We've got here two buttons, this and this. So it appears if I use the hierarchy, this one is an optimal one. Um, apologize. 
with the greater than sign to indicate the strict hierarchy between the last two elements, but a loose hierarchy between the first two. That gives me the most unique CSS selector right here. So this is, this is the CSS selector that would be unique enough. Now in the next videos, I'll show you some examples where sometimes hierarchy is needed and sometimes you want to focus more on the attributes. Uh, really depends on the platform. It depends on the social media you're using. It depends on your use case. Um, but don't worry, we'll walk through some examples. By now, I hope you understand the main concepts of tags, attributes, and hierarchy. With this, you can already achieve a lot.